All right, so ACA ethical standard A4B. Uh, there's a lot going on in this standard. Um, essentially, it, it comes down to Greek philosophy. A little bit of a know thyself is definitely built in there. But basically, you, you need to know and understand who and how you are, what your values are, so that you can ensure that those values are not encroaching on those of your clients it says you know right in the standard uh, respect the diversity of the clients and trainees and research participants anybody who's basically on the slant of the downhill side of that power dynamic that comes with being a counselor and also the part at the end where you're especially being aware of when um, your values as a counselor could be um, not just impinging on the needs of your clients but also um, discriminatory against your clients and that I think is one of the really major key points in our textbook, Remley and Hurley um, had a really nice reminder in the section on the ACA code discussing how um, basically the counselor can often be too close to the issue. You often can't see your own bias, especially if there's an emotionally charged component to it. And so that's where seeking supervision is really crucial, especially I think for um, those of us who will be starting out as novice counselors for the first time uh, here pretty soon. Uh, Bain et al. in 2021 ran a study where they interviewed 12 counselors who uh, identified as Christian and deeply religious. And all 12 of them were working with LGBTQ clients or had worked with LGBTQ clients in the past. And they all found that they perceived themselves as um, being able to practice ethically and competently despite their religious background uh, being sort of at odds and experiencing some dissonance with their clients. And I, th I think that also circles back to what our text was saying, like, you think you're doing a good job, but you, you might need to have someone else who is an objective source who's outside of your um, cultural values helping you see where your blind spots might be. Um, but in the research study, they identified um, sort of three components in addition to experiencing that dissonance and uh, dealing with transference and counter-transference. Um, one of the things they found with helping to bracket off your beliefs is really having an in-depth understanding of who you are, how you are, what your values are, and being well-versed in that so that you're not surprised when those things come up. You're not surprised by someone else being so different from you that you feel feelings about it. Being able to bracket off your beliefs really for the benefit of the client, all focused on uh, their needs, uh, the client's needs as separate and understood the role of the counselor is really to help people identify parts of their life that they want to change, help them identify goals to making those changes, and then go about the business of supporting them while they make those changes. And I think that really speaks to me. Um, that's, I think, one of the reasons I went into teaching in the first place, and one of the reasons I'm very interested in uh, counseling is, you know, everybody, I think, deserves to be okay. Everyone deserves to be emotionally functional. And a big part of my job as a counselor is to help them get there. And it doesn't matter if they have uh, beliefs or ways about their life that are drastically different from mine or even in conflict with mine. Uh, I really do think that the world is a better place when all of us feel better. So two values of mine that I think uh, could be sticky issues with me is, is, is actually sort of the opposite of um, the article that I found. I grew up um, in a deeply religious conservative community. Um, I grew up in the church and I, I saw a meme a few years ago that said uh, basically along the lines of tolerant of all religions except the one I was raised in and I, I feel that. And I know that that's something that I need to work on. I'm aware of it and so I need to work on it and that would definitely be someplace where I would want to seek supervision to make sure that I'm not imposing my worldview on someone who is Christian. Uh, another another place that I come from is uh, politically I'm, I'm very, very leftist. Um, and so that that's an area, especially coming out of the, <laughs> the last few administrations, uh, feeling more and more divided as a country. I think that's something that I can always be working on and something that I definitely need to be careful, um, making sure that, again, um, I'm not conflating my needs and my understanding with what my client needs to be okay. Uh, and that's where I think um, what we learned in the 560 class with our reading from uh, Young 2021, uh, where the importance of the tutorial stance and having um, having someone who is of a different culture and different worldview sort of, if they're open to it and find it helpful, having them sort of take the lead on helping me understand uh, who they are. I mean, af after all, the client is the expert in their life and their worldview. They've been living with themselves a lot longer than I've ever known them. So I think that's a really powerful way to help bridge the gap when uh, there is some dissonance and also exploring that, not uh, shying away from it, not trying to minimize it, but really diving into it and saying, hey, then we can explore that together and really help strengthen the therapeutic relationship. So there's there's just my thoughts in probably way more than three to five minutes on ACA standard A.4.B. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.